I'm Dennis Bragg in Missoula. The spring report from the Institute for Tourism and Recreation Research at the University of Montana had been filled with good news in May. The treasure state hadn't thrived but survived two years of COVID. Our tourism visitation spending did not decrease nearly as much as a lot of areas. So we were at an advantage in that regard. Rao says some of that $5 billion in business last year was driven by a huge interest in travelers to enjoy Montana's wide open spaces, some by higher prices. Because we did have quite quite a bit of demand. So price of accommodations was higher. Uh, rental car availability was an issue. So that was expensive. So things were costing a bit more. Still a 12% increase from 2020 was good news with predictions for a more even season in 22. I don't think any of us expected things to continue on that same steep upward trajectory. Um, that's I don't think that's something that we would reasonably expect to see multiple years in a row. So we knew that we wouldn't see such high spending, such kind of overcrowding of some areas. However, trouble signs showed up in May with visits to Yellowstone and Glacier Down and tourism businesses blaming the slow start on gas and near winter weather. But it all fell apart this week with the floods closing Yellowstone and its gateway communities. Grau says everyone's first thought is safety and concern. Secondly, puzzled over what happens now statewide. You know, in an average year, about half of our visitors say they stop at Yellowstone. So, you know, if if those folks are having to cancel their trips, that's that's a very big impact to the region, of course, to the state as a whole and 